Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Downey and today I want to talk about a different beta blocker. I apologize for any background noise in this video. I decided to film outside. And so the topic of beta blockers and which is the best has been popularized recently. And I'm sure you all know about Nabivalol and its beneficial effects on blood pressure, heart rate, and potential lipolysis. But I wanted to draw your attention to another beta blocker. This interest of mine was mainly driven by the fact that Nabivalol is not readily available in South Africa anymore and there are supply shortages. So I wanted to introduce you all to an alternative and one that I think could be more beneficial than Nabivalol given the circumstance. So for those who don't know, beta blockers are useful in the context of steroids because they decrease sympathetic nervous system activation, decrease your heart rate and have some benefits on decreasing your blood pressure. The issue with most beta blockers is that they're not selective, so they have effects that sometimes accumulate into side effects such as weight gain, metabolic side effects such as increased risk of diabetes, increased cholesterol, and things that are definitely not favorable from an athletic point of view. So we've shifted away from non-selective beta blockers to something called selective beta blockers. The reason for this is that all they do is decrease the heart rate and blood pressure with minimal side effects elsewhere. And whilst Nabivalol is very popular at the moment, I wanted to draw your attention to a, another third generation beta blocker known as Carvidolol. I've had more experience with this beta blocker due to its availability and price. It is incredibly cheap. And Carvidolol does offer some advantages over that of Nabivalol. So both Nabivalol and Carvidolol have nitric oxide mediated effects. So this means they help with vasodilation, which typical beta blockers don't have. And this helps with oxidative stress. Now, the reason oxidative stress is so important in steroid use is that oral steroids typically, although some injectables can be oxidative. So with this nitric oxide effect that it has, it helps vasodilate vessels, and this can be beneficial in the case of erectile dysfunction. So Nabivalol isn't the only one to have that effect. Furthermore, Carvidolol, like Nabivalol, doesn't increase your risk of metabolic disease, such as high cholesterol, diabetes, and anything that falls under that bracket. It has actually been shown to exert beneficial effects in chronic use for insulin sensitivity and hypercholesterolemia. Its ability to decrease blood pressure is similar to that of Nabivalol. However, it hasn't had this demonstrated effect of stimulating the beta-3 receptor, which is thought to be the reason why Nabivalol works well in lipolysis. But Carvidolol has a very interesting effect that I'm not sure if you're aware of, and that's because it is quite anabolic. We have two trials that demonstrate this effect. The first one being the RCT ACT-1 trial, so it's a randomized control trial, and they demonstrated that in these patients with cancer, 16 weeks of treatment with Carvidolol resulted in an increase of 0.54 kgs in weight. But what was interesting is this was almost exclusively lean body mass. So whereas typical non-selective beta blockers result in weight gain more likely that to be fat gain, Carvidolol showed an increase in lean muscle mass. And we have another trial that supports this, the Copernicus trial, which showed that Carvidolol treatment improved weight over that of placebo, and this had beneficial survival outcomes. The way in which Carvidolol increases lean muscle mass is hypothesized to be through stimulation of beta arrestin receptors. So we have a trial that I'll show up here called the beta arrestin bias beta adrenergic receptor blocker carvidolol enhances skeletal muscle contractility. The reason for this trial is that these researchers were the ones who demonstrated that clenbuterol is in fact anabolic, increases skeletal muscle contractility as well as mass. And the reason for its anabolic ability was 
hypothesized through the beta arrestin pathway. Clenbuterol is an agonist to the beta arrestin, and this receptor is important for decoupled protein receptors. Now, I won't go into details, but essentially through its stimulation, it results in positive protein synthesis and positive outcomes for skeletal muscle contractility. And in this trial, they found that carvedilol had a similar effect to clenbuterol on skeletal muscle contractility. So essentially it improved tensile force or strength, which is important in the case of individuals so suffering from sarcopenia, which results in muscle weakness. However, unlike clenbuterol, it didn't seem to have much of an effect on skeletal muscle weight or fiber type at the end of the trial. So what they could conclude from the study is that carvedilol did improve mu skeletal muscle contractility, but not necessarily skeletal muscle weight. However, in clinical trials in humans, as we just demonstrated, it did increase lean body mass. And in the study, they did state that they saw a positive effect of carvedilol on skeletal muscle mass. However, Due to the small sample size, it wasn't statistically significant. So this anabolic ability seems to be unique to carvedilol in the context of beta blockers. Nabivalol has not been demonstrated to have this anabolic ability, whilst it is useful for lipolysis or fat loss. Another thing about carvedilol is that it too does not decrease performance output, which in the case of beta blockers, they can reduce maximal effort. Furthermore, another interesting effect about carvedilol and why it is favored in patients who suffer from heart failure is that it has positive remodeling effects on the heart, which again is useful in the context of anabolic steroid use since anabolic steroids are known to be negative remodelers of the heart. Another thing that makes carvedilol a nice replacement is that it has a very quick effect and short half-life. So for some this might not be beneficial because it means that there has to be multiple doses a day, usually taken twice daily because its half-life is about seven to nine hours but it peaks in one to two hours and the reason I like that is because whilst it's more hypothetical I like to decrease the sympathetic nervous system response after training not directly after training since sympathetic neural responses are quite beneficial in the context of anabolism but in the case of steroid use the sympathetic activation lasts a lot longer and this can lead to anxiety or just elevated blood pressures for unnecessarily long periods and with the short half-life and quick onset of action, it's able to ameliorate these effects without extending into the next day before a workout. And if you remember, I mentioned that both nabivalol and carvedilol do not impact workouts per se, but the research is limited. Anecdotes would report that sometimes beta blockers do decrease performance output. And so this makes a beta blocker with a shorter half-life more favorable because it's out of your system before the next workout. However, if we look at that study done in rats, carvedilol increases skeletal muscle contractility. So again, it could be useful in the pre-workout context through increasing strength. However, this effect hasn't been demonstrated. So I decided to make this video because a lot of people don't have access to nabivalol and think nabivalol is the be all and end all. We have alternatives such as carvedilol that are quite beneficial in the context of anabolism and will help with your blood pressure control. So you have more options than just nabivalol, which can be quite pricey and not easily accessible, but I'm not promoting carvedilol's use over nabivalol. It is very individual dependent and for some the fat loss that nabivalol offers might be more beneficial than the anabolic ability of carvedilol. So I hope you learned something from this video and that more people will research into the effects of carvedilol on performance output and I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.